Hey everybody, we're back. Um, getting more work done on the dream bag here that we're calling it, which is just not really a dream bag, just making myself a new everyday bag, and I only do this once every five or so years. So um, if you didn't watch the first video, we are making sort of an LL Bean style tote bag out of leather. Um, I'll put the link in the corner and uh, description, something like that. You can go back and watch the first part. And so in this video, we hope to get most of this stuff stitched up. And probably, it's probably gonna end up being three parts because we still have to do the bottom and the handles as well. But we're gonna get as far as we can. So what I'm starting with is last time we wet molded our straps. Now you might see a little water line there. Um, we're gonna oil this after it's all done and that'll blend right back in. Um, I'm just gonna burnish my straps and then we're gonna get all this glued in together. There's a little tip. Um, I'm sanding with 320 grit after I've beveled and some hides are just a little hairier than others and you could sand down further. Um, this is six inch bri six ounce bridle though. I don't really want to. Take your lighter. If it's a little too hairy, just run the lighter really quickly down the edges and it'll get rid of all those little fibers without burning anything. And you get nice and smooth. So now it's finally time to get to gluing and I've roughed up um, the outline here. What I've done is I have little marks that you probably can't see on camera, but there's a center mark where our pocket's gonna go. And then I figured out the, out, the overlap I'm gonna go with. And then our strap's gonna go like this and I have all my lines. Now you'll notice I'm not actually punching any stitch lines on my pocket itself with my dividers because I've put them on the strap so this, this seam will get the pocket stitched in here. Then we stitch on the bottom, that seam will stitch the, the pocket on this side. So I don't actually need to like specifically sew in the pocket at all. So, um, so we'll sew. So we're gonna get everything glued in. Um, I might talk a little bit. We'll go over the order of everything. The first thing, I'm gonna do the full glue line here and I'm going to glue along the pocket. And then I'm gonna come back in because I'm gonna have to rough up the top of the pocket so that I can glue the strap over top of that. And when that's done, we're ready to punch and sew. So once we have everything punched, um, I ran out of rits in both colors. So I have Vinimo, which is a nylon, a bonded nylon thread. I'm gonna use the brown on the brown and then the black for the seam so that there's no, I don't know, I just wanna try it out. So basically just have 45 minutes of sewing in front of me now, we'll get that done. All right, so we have actually both sides now, a lot of sewing, and admittedly, I don't use a sewing machine, but if you do, this is a great project for it because it is a lot of just straight stitching, straight lines, we have even more to go. So we have, as you can see, our pocket is in here. Um, the straps are sewn in, everything's buckled up. These are actually, the rivets go through the strap, but they do not go through the bag so that um, the metal, if I put anything on the inside, it won't scratch anything up. Not that these do scratch up, they're double capped, but just to keep everything nice and clean on the interior. Um, and we have both sides done. So one has the branding on it, the back does not. The next step, I have a drawing here. So the next step is going to be, we have to punch a lot of holes, but we're not gonna necessarily sew everything up right away because then we have to get the bottom ready, and then we're gonna sew up the sides. So I have my drawing here of this main piece. And the way that I do this is, I don't do it with glue, I'm gonna do it but we're gonna count stitches to make sure everything lines up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I have my calipers set to 3 eighths of an inch, which that's centimeters, 3 eighths of an inch. And what that's gonna do is I'm going to make my stitch line here and it is gonna be a little bit big. 
like this distance is going to be a little big, but we're using some rivets which are going to sit right there. So you can see it just gives them plenty of room on the sides. And I'm going to make that stitch line on all four of my sides here. And we're going to punch these, and this is where the um, so we're going to count our stitches. But we're not going to count each individual stitch. I'll show you. Um, we've done this in other bags before, but I'll walk you through it on how we're going to count all these stitches to make sure that each side has the right amount of stitches. When we go to sew it, they'll all line up. So all we're going to do is we're going to use the top of our bag as our starting point. We're going to hang our first prong over the edge, and we're going to punch. And that's going to be one. I'm not counting it as five. I'm just counting it as one full punch of the six prong, right? Then I'm going to put my first prong in the last hole. That's going to be two. So on and so forth all the way down the bag. I made 10 punches, so on this side of my thing, I'm just gonna put 10. So I know that on all the sides, I wanna make sure that I'm getting 10 punches and that'll line up everything. So we're getting a lot of pieces and parts together. Um, this is These are gonna be the tabs for the shoulder strap that I'm gonna just put the tabs on the bag. I don't know if I'll make the shoulder strap right away because I usually use the hand straps, um, like the short handles. But all this is is a three quarter inch strip of leather. I put some glue on the inside. I dyed and burnished the edges. I'm just gonna pass that through my D-ring and line it up so that the holes stick together. And there we go. Um, and we're going to set these to the side. So what, what we're doing right now is we're doing a lot of prep work so that once we have all of our pieces cut and punched and because we're doing all of the stitch counting and stuff, it's basically just all going to go together. So the next step we're going to do is we are going to get the bottom of our bag finally cut out of that brown leather. And unlike like the pink tote that we made where it's all one piece, in this we have a bunch of different pieces. So this is our main body, body panel that we've already cut out and worked with. What we're going to do is for the base, we want, because our design is going, this is the base part that we're cutting out right here. So we need two and a half inches of exposure on the front of the bag and the back of the bag, which is five inches. Then I want a four inch gusset. So that's nine inches total. So we're gonna start, we, need, we know we need it to be 18 inches long because that's the width of our bag. And then we need it to be nine inches tall. So that's our main panel that we need to cut out. Next, we need to cut our notches. So we want a four inch gusset. So we're gonna go up 2.5 and down 2.5. This will be four because we did all the math. I'm going to cut in two and three eighths inches. Two and three eighths. And that will allow us to fold these up and over and sew them together with the three eighths inch overlap that we have on the side of our main body panel as well. Then we're gonna basically put this together before we sew the whole thing together. So we're gonna build basically a tray, our base tray, and we're gonna pre-punch all of our holes on the tops and on the bottom of all along here so that they all line up. Once our tray is together, we can sew up the sides of our bag so it's in a circle. Then we can sew the base to the top of our bag. And the reason I'm doing that is because I really want to take this center section here, which we could cut out, and I want to fold it up and rivet it. And I don't have a long arm riveting press. I don't even know, I'm sure that's probably a thing, but I don't have one. And I want to fold this up and rivet it. So by keeping this as a tray, this will allow me to access this point and rivet these base pieces before I sew everything together. I'm going to do our cuts now, so I've measured out what we drew out, right? So this is a four inch gap, a four inch wide gusset here, so that's going to be the bottom of our bag. This is two and three eighths inch deep, so it'll give us that three eighths inch overlap. Um, and I'm going to cut these lines straight, and what I've done, like I do most of the time, is I punched a hole first so that this won't rip in the future. And someone actually in the comments mentioned that this has a name in metalwork um, when you're doing, like, folding sheet metal and stuff. I don't remember what it was called. but there is a name for it, which is kind of cool. So 
first step, we'll just cut these straight lines. And then what I am going to do, I want to give our center section a little bit of shape. So I'm going to line this up on the, using my mat, the grid on my mat. And I'm going to go in a half inch. And I'm going to cut an angle. And then I'll round this over. And it'll just be like, like a nice little detail. Um, again, it's our inspiration here is like an, an LL Bean canvas tote. And they kind of do this. They fold everything into, because it's fabric, they fold it into a triangle. So that'll give kind of an allusion. It'll kind of allude to, to that design. I have to round this over, these over, but we're going to start to see how this is going to work. So we're going to fold this up both sides. Then these get folded in and they overlap. We're going to stitch up here and then this is going to fold up like that. And you can kind of see how the base of our bag is going to come together. Sorry, it feels like it was very hard to explain, but to, it's much easier to show you. Now, what I haven't figured out yet is, am I going to try to stitch around this or am I just going to do some rivets? I think, because we're already going to be stitched here, I think I'm just going to do some rivets. So I think I'm going to do rivet here, 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 and here. So four rivets that will attach like this. Um, but we'll figure it out once we get everything rounded over and I have to burnish everything first. All right, so now we have to make all of our marks for our stitch lines and we have to punch everything out before we put anything together um, because it's flat, the piece is flat right now. So the first thing we're gonna do is, I have two sets of dividers here. This is my normal seam allowance, which is what we used on this. And this is our special 3 8 inch seam allowance, which is going to be just the size of the bags so that we can fit rivets and we can fit our D-rings like we just made. So this seam is going to connect to the bottom of the bag like this. So I'm going to use my normal seam allowance, my normal seam allowance divider on the top on the two tops, I guess. So I'm going to just do this all the way to the end on either side because we're going to be sewing these together first at this end. Now this end is the same as this end. That didn't make any sense at all. <laughs> this is the side of the bag. So because this is the side of the bag, we're going to use our 3 8 inch seam allowance. And we're going to mark that there. We're going to mark that there. We're going to flip the bag over and mark both sides. And now we're going to punch. And basically, this is kind of, these are kind of like little mini versions of this. So we're going to do the same thing and we're going to hang a stitching prong over the edge and count our stitches this way and everything should line up. The top, however, or the tops, we need to pick one side and stitch from it on both this piece, this piece, and both of these pieces, but they need to be flipped like that. So we're starting to get a, an idea here. It is a little confusing, um, but again, I'm just gonna walk you through it as best I can. So I made my little pattern here of rivets, and I'm actually going to set the first one because I can line it up on the center seam before I mark out and punch the rest of them, just so that I know that this is centered and it's not going anywhere. And you can see, because we left the bottom of this um, detached from the rest of the bag, that just is super simple to do, which is nice. Um, so we're just going to go do the second one, and then we'll go back to the workbench, and we'll mark out all the rest of our rivet locations and we'll punch those and it should be almost as easy to get the rest of these set whereas if we were to sew this all together first and then try to set these we either have to have a specialized super long arm press that we could slide the whole bag onto or do by hand which I've done and it's not fun so let's go back and get these marked out so sometimes you have to get creative on how you can get your holes punched if you're doing dimensional stuff like this. 
Um, these were no problem to get with the rotary puncher because they fit. Sometimes you can roll down the leather and kind of cram this in, but with this one, it's thicker leather. So all I'm doing is I'm taking my punch pad, putting it up on its end, and you can just slide right over. And you don't use a rotary punch, but just a normal hole punch. And that allows us to get these little corner ones punched in. So here's the bottom of our bag all done. You can see we have our copper pop rivets and then we're also stitched down the middle. So this is gonna be plenty strong. But at the end of the day, when this piece wears out after 20 or 30 years from being set on the ground so much, we don't have to replace the entire bag. We can just take the bottom off, make another one, put the new one back on and keep using the bag. So this is kind of how you have to think about if you're designing things for a lifetime as the word likes to get thrown around a lot. Um, you don't just have to make it high quality, you have to make it repairable. And this will allow us to do that, should we need to. Um, the next step then, I think we're gonna leave the video with this, we're going to get this line punched so that this can attach to this in the next video, first thing. And then we'll get our sides sewn up like this so that we have our two pieces ready to be connected. So what I'm gonna do for our stitch line on the bottom of this bag is all of my stitches for these um, straps landed at about the same spot. So I'm gonna set my stitch line on my calipers to go through that spot. And then I'm gonna just trace that. It's gonna be a little bit taller than this one, but than the, the base, but that's totally okay. It'll give us a little bit of, um, of support and that overlap because this leather is so thick. Any of that overlap is just gonna make it more sturdy. We have our sides all sewn up, and then the last step, for today at least, is we need to get our little, I did this one this side already, and you can see I used um, a different type of copper rivet. These are just a little bit stronger because this is, um, you know, this is gonna support weight, but it's got all this stitching. Um, I'm not a huge fan of just using two pop rivets. It works, but for something like this, I know I'm gonna put a bunch of weight in it. Um, I wanna use something a little bit stronger, so I'm gonna be using these solid copper rivets. And to do the other side, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to put my bag, put one of these blocks in between my bag here, like that. So that way I have easy access to the two holes that I'm putting my rivets through. And you can see I just, I sewed right through these holes and then I'm wiggling this rivet in between. So the thread is going straight through and it's not going to get split by punching the holes after we have split, after we've sewn them. All right, so the first step is we have the burr smushed down on the rivet. We're using the uh, Weaver Heritage uh, rivet setter, just hand setter. I'm gonna go ahead and clip off parts of the rivet that we don't need. Make sure to close your eyes so you don't get anything in your eye. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> then the setter has a doming piece, so we're going to put the doming piece on next. And that will dome over the rivet. Now, you can stop there. Uh, we have a whole video about how to set rivets and how far you can go with them. I like to take uh, I use this little crate hammer. We have the quarter pounders as well. This is kind of a, we're making these. They're coming out soon. This is a version of this, but this face isn't smooth enough. It's a prototype. So I'm gonna use my old one. And I like to use this as a peening hammer. Flatten that down a little bit. Then I'm gonna go back in with my doming jig on the rivet setting tool. Just a couple taps. And that just kind of rounds everything over. And then the last bit 
Um, you're gonna have probably some hammer marks on the leather itself. You can just go through with your painting hammer and hammer around the edges of your rivets and that'll take those right away and it'll smooth it back out. When you're working in close quarters like this, this is only about an inch. Um, it's kind of hard to avoid marks, but you just do your best you can when we oil it and once it's used for a little while, they'll all go away. All right, so we have our main body and our bottom and you can see we have, remember we're gonna have um, tubular handles connected to these D-rings so that, that are gonna be stitched in permanent and then our sides here are for a cross body strap if we want to. Now, the way this is gonna go together is this is going to go inside of here. So I think I can set this in and we can kind of get an idea of what this bag is gonna look like. Bring this up to about there. There we go. So that's what we're kind of aiming for. And uh, I'm pretty psyched on it. I think it's gonna look great. So in the next video, we'll get the bottom sewn on, we'll get the handles done, and we should be good to go. So three part series. Um, you guys were really psyched on the first part. I'm really happy because we don't, you know, we try to get videos all done in one or two, um, but this was kind of a big project. So tune in next week. We'll get this all finished up and thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next one.